Hello, I'm Chris Bailey and I am a Blender YouTuber over at C Bailey Film and today I'm doing this tutorial with CG Cookie. We're going to be showing you the top six nodes that you need to make any material in Blender. Let's check it out. Now don't forget to check out cgcookie.com. We've got an amazing collection of tutorials and resources there for you to check out. You can sign up with a free account today to get started. So here's my sphere. I'm gonna go ahead and click new under the material tab, to create a new material on it and automatically it creates the beginning which is the principal BSDF shader and the material output. So what are our five nodes? Well, first off, we're gonna talk about the texture coordinate node. Now to find any of these nodes, you can just shift A to get your search panel up and type in the name of the item in the search. So I'm gonna type in the texture coordinate node. The texture coordinate node is great for positioning textures onto your 3D object. If you've got UVs that you've laid out, this is how you can access them. By default, Blender uses the generated texture coordinate and we're gonna see in a minute how this is gonna be powerful and how we can use it to unlock some really cool material properties. The next material node that we're gonna talk about is the color ramp node. Now the color ramp node is one of the most fundamental ways to put color into your material, but it's also a great way to begin to manipulate other things like textures. Now, all you do is you can create your color ramp. I'll just show you basically plug it into the base color here of my object and I can drag these around, but you can see that it's just uniformly changing the uh, color of my sphere. However, if I choose to use one of these coordinates, um, it's gonna actually help place it. So if I place the generated into the factor here, can see that I can start to get some specific control where I'm getting the gradient to appear on my object itself. So you can make some really interesting stuff just with this alone. The next node we're gonna talk about is the noise texture node. Let's take a look. The noise texture node does what it says. It generates noise. If we take a look at it, and I plug it straight into the base color of my principal BSDF shader. You can see we're getting a noise pattern. I can change the scale, I can change the detail and the roughness to get all kinds of variation. Now distortion is a great value as well for creating water-like effects to begin to distort and twist the image. It starts to become really effective when you plug it into something like a color ramp. So if I take my color ramp here and put it here in between the noise texture and the principal BSDF. I can also plug in my generated, which is what it's doing already by default. And now I've got a really interesting looking shader. And you can see by using the color ramp, I can crunch down and eliminate sections of this noise or allow more of it to come through. Uh, if you come all the way down on your detail and your roughness, you're gonna get these really nice kind of amorphous blob type shapes. And if you come over to your color ramp and switch from linear interpolation to something like constant, you're gonna get a real hard edged look to get really interesting cartoon effects. The next node we're gonna look at is the Veroni texture. The Voronoi or Veroni or Voronoi texture is really, really exciting because you can create some fantastic shapes with it. Similar to the noise texture, it's a generative procedural texture. So Blender is creating a noise pattern and using it to create the material. Now, if I replace my noise texture here in this chain with the Voronoi, I can plug the distance in, I can plug the color or the position. All of these are gonna give me different results. Plus, I've got quite a few drop downs. Let me show you some of the cool things you can do with it. If I plug my distance into my color ramp and I switch this back to ease, we'll be able to see what it's actually doing. You can get this initial kind of cellular pattern with the Voronoi. It's a really cool look. You can create some nice organic shapes. But what's also really handy is you can switch from Euclidean to Manhattan to get more of a square shape. Or you can come over to Chebyshev, turn down random, and you can see you start to get these really nice grid lines. Now, if you don't wanna have the layout circular like this, uh, the sphere actually comes with its UVs already laid out if you use the default sphere. So if I use the UV as the vector uh, into my Voronoi, you can see that it actually lays it out like a grid. And then I can switch this to something like constant or I can bring these really close together to get a nice grid pattern look. And this is really helpful for making things like tiles or bricks. One thing that's really cool is if I switch down to the Minkowski, you have the exponent uh, value that you can change. And the exponent value you see actually changes these shapes and so you can get rounded squares. And this is really great for making things like bathroom tiles. If you increase the randomness and turn it right up, 
things start getting really random with this shader and you begin to see how much is possible with it. The next node we're gonna look at is the Mix RGB node. Now the Mix RGB node does what it says, it mixes. It mixes two different types of color, but it can also mix other things as well. Let's take a look. So first I'm gonna grab this up here and I'm gonna stick it in between the Veroni and the color ramp. Now I can take my noise texture and I can plug this into the other color. And now this slider allows me to transition between these two materials. So you can see you can get nice hybrid effects where both of them are actually affecting our color ramp now. There are all kinds of combination modes. You can multiply, color burn, light and screen, just like you can in a photo manipulation software like GIMP or Photoshop. These different color mix effects allow you to have a lot of control over how things are combined. Another really exciting way to use the mix RGB is actually to bring it over before the texture coordinate node. So if I was to duplicate this with Shift D and bring it right up here uh, to the, let's say the Voronoi texture, and I can take a noise texture now and I can place this into the factor of the other color. And what this is going to do is it's going to distort the way this Voronoi texture is placed on my sphere. Because remember, the texture coordinate node tells Blender how to place textures. So if you start mixing values into here, you're basically mixing the placement of a texture. You can really see some really cool results. The last node we're looking at is the bump node. The bump node can take any black and white value and turn it into height map information for Blender in order to simulate more geometry than you really have. I'm gonna take this system here that we've just created, but instead of piping it into this color ramp, I'm gonna create another color ramp. And I'll stick it right here before the bump node and I'll bring this color into the factor. Now let me show you what this looks like. I'll just plug it first into the base color to replace this one so you can see it. It's just a black and white image. Now, I'm gonna take this black and white image and I'm gonna plug it into the height value of my bump node. And then I'll take the normal output and plug it into the normal of my shader. The normal refers to the direction that polygons are facing. So basically, we're pretending there are more polygons here than there really are. And we're changing the way they all face with this height map being translated into a normal. I plug my color back into the base color and now you can see it looks like we have extra geometry on our object, quite a crazy texture. You can back off the strength to get a nice in-between effect if you don't want it to be too strong. Or if you're playing around with a color ramp, you can actually control different sections by cutting areas out with the color ramp or change the value. Instead of pure black and pure white, if you come to more gray tones, it's going to soften up your bump it won't make it quite as strong. Now, as a final touch, I'll just talk through what are the things you need to know about the principle of BSDF in order to really kind of land your material. Now, we've got quite a few values that you can mess around with, but the main ones to focus on are your base color, which sets the color for your object, subsurface, which allows it to be a translucent material, and I'll demonstrate that in a moment, metallic, which can make your material look like it's made of metal. You can see if I drag this up, it looks like it's made of metal now. Very straightforward. Specular, which affects how much the highlights are visible, how much highlight there is based on the lights. Roughness, which is a very important one. This one determines how much your material reflects the environment. The closer it gets to zero, the more like a mirror it becomes. The higher it goes, the closer to one, the more it spreads the light out and blurs any reflections. And the last two that are, I think, most important to know about are emission and emission strength. Emission allows you to cause uh, your shader to glow. So by plugging my color ramp into the emission, you can see that it begins to cause it to emit light. If I turn up the strength, it's gonna glow hotter and hotter. And those are the top six nodes that you need to know to make any kind of material in Blender. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. What do you think of the top six material nodes to make any kind of shader in Blender? Let us know in the comments. You might disagree with what we've picked. I'm curious to find out what you would do to make any material. Thanks for checking this out. I'll catch you in the next tutorial. See ya.